Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of In Focus with me, Jawadia Perif. I wanted today to take you out of the studio to do something a little new. I decided to introduce you to one of my very dear friends. Her name is Sarah. She was born and brought up in Sweden and she has been a Muslim for seven years. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Sarah. Thank you so much for receiving us in your own today. We're very pleased to be here. You're more than welcome. Today we'd like to discover a little about your life. As we've just said, you're a new Muslim. And uh, probably the viewers now are seeing an increasing number of new Muslims embracing Islam, practicing the religion of Islam. How do you feel this religion is in 2003? How were you before? Shall we start with your childhood? Could yeah. you tell us something about your previous uh, time? Yeah, I was born in Sweden and I was a Protestant. And as a Protestant I was uh, baptized and then I had my confirmation. I used to go to Sunday school, I went to uh, teenage church uh, after school and that was a little bit about my religion. Then I moved from Sweden to uh, Denmark where I studied and then from Denmark I moved to um, London where I did my university. I finished there with the interior architecture. I am an interior architect, but I don't work with that today. In what field do you work now? I'm in sales and marketing now for an international company All right. in Dubai. So, what about your, I wouldn't say the first contact with Muslims, we'll talk about this later on, but how did you feel about your previous religion in your childhood and teenage? Um, I, always, I always believed in God, and when I did my confirmation, my mother, she asked me, she wanted to know what I believed in and I said I believe in God but I don't believe that Jesus was the son of God and she said okay she accepted that and um, then I moved oh my mom she was working in the Middle East so that's how I got introduced to okay. Islam so that's your first contact with Muslims basically yeah. or more with Islam how was it did you have a kind of a right picture of Islam through the Muslims when I was uh, younger? Yes. Um, when I was away with her, I had to do a project for my school. All right. And I did it on, on Islam. So I presented it, so then I had to do a little research in, when I was traveling, and then I had to present it when I got back to school. And while I was in London in uh, university, I also, I mean, there was a lot of Arabs in university, so I also got to know a little bit more about Islam. Sarah, what was your main, your first attraction to Islam in terms of differences? Is probably something that has appealed you in this new religion that you were not uh, founding in your previous religion, Christianity. Yeah. You know, I mean, the belief is clearly defined in uh, Islam. And, you know, in Christianity, they say God is everywhere, which is not true because God is not everywhere. He's not a a shape or a person or anything and um, you know this can really you know it misleads you and it did mislead me I didn't understand God cannot be everywhere you know we have um, the Creator existed before everything so you know he's not in a place so we can't say that he's everywhere he's because everyone is the totality of the places yeah. after all. Yeah, and also, you know, I mean, they say that he's up in heaven and people look up in heaven. He's not in heaven because then again, you know, we are saying that he's in a place. Yeah, he's not confined yeah. in a, or limited in a location, yeah. of course. Not. So, you know, and this can mislead people. You know, people, they look up to the sky. No, I mean, we have, you know, six directions. And, you know, we cannot say that God is anywhere. And in Christianity, I felt that I was being misled, and also, you know, the Jewish, they say that the Creator is established on a throne. Again, you know, people think, okay, is he sitting in a, you know, in a sofa somewhere? No. And you cannot say him, you know, him is not a person. It's just that this is... We not call as it, a gender. Yes, and it's not a gender. Mm -hmm. So you can, you know, Islam, this it's for you know it's certain rules and then you learn these rules then you understand you know what the creator you know what How it is to direct yeah. your worship towards the creator yeah. and not something of your imagination yeah. like some people may do in other faiths indeed mm. i think this is something really that myself I was very very much touched with is that when you talk about the creator you never say how mm. or where 
because he is different than the creation. He existed before all of this and he still is the same as he was before, that he's perfect and unchanged. Mm. He didn't become a body, no. he didn't start being lim limited in a, in a location. Therefore, we say, he does not resemble the creation in yeah. any way. Yeah. And this is the pure belief Muslims have, fortunately. Yeah. So this is like your main attraction. Finally, you knew who you were worshipping. Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, it's very defined. It's very defined. And uh, also, you know, I mean, you know, you believe in your heart and you declare with your tongue. This is, this is... Uh, the confirmation yes. of your faith. And this, you know, you don't have that anywhere else. Now, in terms of behaviors, else than the, the belief, what uh, were you missing before? Because we do realize that in some Western societies, maybe some people are looking for something. They sometimes meditate or, you know, they're seeking something. What, uh, what has Islam brought into your life as a feeling or behaviors that you were missing before? It has brought uh, patience and uh, discipline. You know, the discipline that you pray five times a day. Some people might think that that's a lot. And it's not, you know, you don't feel it because it's, if I'm at work and I have to go and pray, it's time when I can take and, you know, be to myself and pray to my God. And, you know, it, it takes, it gives you, you know, time for yourself, only for yourself. And, you know, you, you really discipline yourself. It's not something that is tiring to do. It's nice it makes you, you happy, say. you know. It, definitely, because a lot of people, and especially nowadays in some societies, I think when they say discipline, they see it like a, oof, you know, a word no. that we don't really like. They don't realize that discipline can bring a lot to each and every person. But nowadays it seems that a lot of people would rather go to a quick fix or self-satisfaction and indulgement. And that is a major problem because they lose, they lose touch with spirituality and how to share with others. But, you know, if people, they go into meditation, yeah. you know. And praying is probably, I mean, you know, it's very, you feel very pure, you know, you have, you, you do your wudu and then you, you know, you go and pray and, you know, you feel very, you feel very good, you, it relaxes you. You know, if you are upset or something, if you go and, you know, you do your wudu and you go and pray, it really relaxes you. And, you know, you start again being patient because that's all it is, you know, that you are patient and, you know, you know what, everything you do, you should do it right. So there we have Elaine or Helen mm. moving to Sarah slowly, but uh, surely you were mm. evolving. What was the reaction of your family when they saw you changing? Um, it was mixed. My mother, she's very happy for me. And maybe because she has lived in the Middle East and she sees, you know, how people are and everything. In Sweden, you know, maybe some people have different opinions about Muslims. And, you know, they think maybe women are lower, you know, they're looked down at. And that's not true. You know, a woman has so many rights in Islam and she's very protected. Would you like to say a word about that? Um, in I terms mean, of marrying or... Yeah, in marriage, you know, you have your rights. I mean, you know, it's, it's only societies that maybe make, you know, women, you know, in some societies that, you know, she... You know, wearing a scarf is nothing that you are forced to do, it's up to yourself, it's something that you protect yourself mm -hmm. and you do that for God, you don't do that for anybody else and your husband is not, you know, somebody who tells you what to do, no, you do that because you want to do it, you know, it's give and take all the time with your husband and there's, you know, in no other religion is there, you know, a certain rules, you know, how a husband and wife should be together and uh, this is maybe misinterpreted in, in very much in the because West. of some cultures yes. around the world. Yeah. You just told us about your mother. What about your father? I want to tell you one more thing about my mother. Uh, always when I'm with her, she always reminds me, isn't it time for you to pray? I think this is very sweet and I know that she's very close to Islam and inshallah she will embrace Islam. It's amazing that she reminds you on the prayers. Yeah, yeah, and I, I feel very good about that. Even my father, you know, in his house I pray and, you know, I mean, he will, you know, tell other people, please be quiet because she's praying. <laughs> so I, I do know, yes, they do respect me and they respect, it's my choice, you know, I mean, what religion I want to have. You know, maybe it's a little bit different, but I haven't changed as a person. Maybe I've become better because I have maybe more patience and, you know, it, it will take, me through life, you know, in the way that is good for me and not in a bad way. Definitely. And we talked a little about the father and mother. If we go outside and we meet the friends with this major change, 
There are different things that uh, change in your life when you become a Muslim and you start practicing. What was the reaction of your friends, colleagues and people around you all together? They are, they're all very happy. I mean, Muslim people, of course, they will be even you know, happier because they feel proud of you and they are happy that you, you know, embrace Islam. Even today I was in the office and, you know, when I go and pray, that reminds other people who are born to be Muslims, you know, that, you know, maybe I should also go and pray. And they even say, you know, I'm so lucky that I'm born a Muslim and sometimes they, you know, how would, you know, it would be very difficult, they would think, you know, to change to another religion. And I said, you know, it's not, I mean, you know, because I'm, I, I, you know, I can always look back and, you know, I have support from uh, Allah. And uh, other friends of mine, you know, I have friends that are Muslims and, you know, they have other religions. But they will still, you know, I respect them, so in return they will respect me. And all my friends that are Muslim, I mean, they try to teach me more and more, you know, because I still have to learn. And I think they feel proud, they feel proud, you know, that I'm, I'm one of them. And it makes it, you know, when you have Muslim friends, these are really your friends. You know, I mean, you know, you have so much in common. You have everything in common. The, the, the love for the sake of the Creator, yeah. when you feel this yeah. chemistry, yeah. It's, a, it's a pure friendship, which is regardless the title, the family, the money, the position. Mm. It's purely for the belief we yeah. carry in our hearts. We call it Aqidah. Mm. Now, um, you've just kind of a couple of weeks, you came back from Sweden, you were there on holiday. How, how was it altogether to be a Muslim out and about? Now? Yes. Um, I'm very, I look up to the to Muslims that are Muslim in a non-Muslim country because it's not that easy, you know, and especially with media, you know, I mean they can, you know, what has happened now in the past years, you know, with September 11, that has reflected bad on, on Islam and, you know, it, but it has nothing to do really with Islam, you know, the religion. Definitely not. And you know, it's more difficult for people. It is difficult for people, you know, and I'm, I'm very lucky to be living in an Islamic country because it's much easier to practice your religion in a, in a, in a Muslim country than in a non-Muslim because they really have to, you know, where, where do they go and pray and, you know, if a woman wear a hijab, people will look at her and... And do you feel they have a, let's say, the, the truthful picture of Islam? Some do and some don't. I mean, Sweden is an open country and you're free to, you know, practice what you want to practice and people respect you for that, but some people, no, they don't. They, they just look at media and they, they don't really look what Islam is, you know. It's, it's, it's a peaceful religion, it's not fighting, and this is what they see, that it's fighting. And it just reminds me on one of the stories you told me once we were sitting, since we're friends, we meet from time to mm. time. You were telling me this really interesting story when you were in a conference oh, yeah. with this man who was quite interested. Yeah, I was uh, in Poland on a, on a training course and that was during Ramadan. I was a little bit worried, you know, I would travel because I was going to be gone for 10 days, you know, because I don't want to break my fast. I want to continue my fast and I did and, you know, people were wondering, you know, are you not coming? joining us for uh, for lunch. Mm -hmm. I said, no, thank you. And they said, you don't eat? No, I said, you know, it's Ramadan now, so we are fasting. And, you know, there were Muslims there and, you know, different religions, but there was one uh, man, he was uh, Christian, and he was very interested, and he thought this is, you know, it, it makes you very strong. You know, I mean, Ramadan, again, it, it's another discipline, and you do that for God. You know, that's one time during the year that you can actually do something for God. And it makes you very strong. I mean, you know, alhamdulillah, when I was there, I didn't have any problems. And, you know, I felt very happy with myself. And I thank, you know, God that he gave me the strength to go through because I still had to continue learning. You know, it was a full day program. But you were just like the others, yeah, attending like, the conference, yeah. feeling okay. Yeah. People were interacting yeah. with you. Yeah. And no one would know if we didn't go no. for lunch. No. no. That's brilliant. Now, there's another thing I would like to ask you about. Uh, Basically, the, the major misconceptions, you know how these stereotypes fall in some Western societies? Could you just name some of them and why, maybe? Um, from Muslims, it's, it's very important that we present ourselves in a right way. You Definitely. know, that we don't do things 
if we do things, okay, then we might we have to. If you don't wear a scarf, okay, then you say. That you do that, for, you know, it's it's your own sin. It's a small sin. You don't have to wear a scarf. If I don't wear a scarf, then you know it's me. But you know, then this is not what you should be doing. And you know, that's just a small thing. But uh, drinking alcohol—that's nothing that you know is allowed in our religion. But if you do do that, okay, and you are a Muslim, you should admit it and say this is not something you should do because mm -hmm. then people understand. In the West, they have to understand that Islam is. Yes, it has certain reason why we don't do certain things. You know, you don't eat pork, and you know, but you can explain that to people. And like halal meat, for instance, you know, in in Sweden, maybe it's you know the meat is not halal, and they don't understand. Yes, why don't you eat it? But you know, we don't eat that. So you explain to them. So basically, you're telling me, which I feel very much when I go back home, also in uh, to Switzerland or Spain, that unfortunately too many people are judging Islam through Muslims. Yeah. Just like, definitely, I think I would never be able to understand everything about Christianity just by watching Christians. Yeah. At the same time, people should not judge Islam through Muslims' behaviors, because some of them may practice their, their religion, some others poorly, some others not at all. And that's the same with Christians, but you don't look, you know, I mean, everybody in Sweden is born as a Christian, but you don't say, okay, look at this Christian. Definitely, no. yes. But, you know, and then, because I'm a Muslim, or, or look at this Muslim, this is how they, you know, because there's many Christians who might not follow everything that, you know, they are supposed to follow, but they don't address that person as the Christian. So it seems that the, the way you talk, we can see two things. The non-Muslims sometimes judging or having misconceptions because of the bad behaviors of Muslims. Yeah. So there is a focus also yeah. for Muslims. Yeah. When they travel, they should try to represent better their religion. Mm. Not only travel, also, in, you know, you have to all do together, it all the yes. time. Yes, all yes. the time. And you have to, like I can talk about, I was a Christian before, like you were, and you know I can I can compare because you know now I know I'm following something that is right, and I can tell other people about that, and you know they respect that because you know they know that I do know a bit about you know Christianity, and now I can you know I can explain to them why why Islam is making me happy and it's you know it's leading me to something good. Now you have three lovely children. Yes, I do. And the eldest one is already a teenager. Yeah. What are the very important values you would like them to carry as adults? I think the value of, I mean, they have to love their religion. And, you know, you have to be proud to be a Muslim, you know, wherever you are in the whole world. You know, you have to be proud to say, yes, Definitely. I'm a Muslim. And, you know, for me, it's an honor to be a Muslim. I mean, I tell them, you're very lucky, you're born a Muslim. I had to, you know, be, you know, to become a Muslim, which I'm very happy that I became. But, you know, because if you, if you love God, you you feel so you don't, never feel lonely. And this is what I tell my children: you're never lonely. You're never lonely. Don't, you know, they don't have to be afraid of anything. The only thing they have to fear is fear God. Definitely. And that's the only thing, you know. I know if they fear God, they will grow up and they will be uh, good people. It gives a very strong foundation to the children and right yeah. balance when definitely you do see that especially when people travel to Western societies. You see some children that don't even answer the salam because they are almost ashamed to especially in a public place to say that they are Muslims. Mm. They, like, you know, I'm not one of you or but it should be something very natural just like other people are from other religions. Yeah. Why should we hide and why should we let our children not tell others about their religion if they're asked at least? It's not that you have to go out and you know, tell everyone, hello, I'm a Muslim, but at least just be happy with yeah. yourself yeah. and be satisfied with your religion. Yeah. Because I believe that real success is not just getting a degree or being a, a it's lawyer. It's very important, you know, when my, uh, when my second daughter, when she was reciting the Fatiha and she prayed, I mean, you know, it gives me tears, and I said, that was, you know, that was her biggest achievement, you know, because, you know, when you learn to, uh, to read the Fatiha and when you learn to pray, you have to tell the children that you're very happy about that, because, you know, yes, you're happy they go to school and they learn and everything, but also we have to remember 
the first thing that we have to bring up our children is to become a good Muslim. Definitely. Because then we know this is the only thing that, you know, us as a parents, we have to ask the children, you know, that they have to believe in God and they have to do good for God. Because then, you know, we have done our duty because everything else will come. It will come together. Yeah. The same, you know, if you're working. I mean, you know, if you do good for God, you know that there's certain rules that you behave when you're working and you do your best. The same for the children, you know, they will do the best too. Very nice. Now, as a conclusion, yeah. Sarah, what would you like to share with the viewers that, uh, let's say, one of or the most precious feeling you, you received from Islam and you would like to share with others today? Oh, it's every, I mean, life, you know, it's everything, you know, I know that there's something I have to work for, for, you know, we are only living here for, you know, few number of years but I have to do good now so I will receive something in the hereafter inshallah and um, you know it's it's belonging to Islam and to say you're a Muslim that's something you should be proud of not something that you know you should feel it should make you strong I'm very happy to be a Muslim and um, it makes me strong you know it makes it makes me feel strong I, I you know I want to share that with other people if they ask me yes I will share it with them you know it's they, they will have their own views and but I, you know my belief is that you know I'm very proud to be a Muslim and I'm very happy that I I found that that it was not too late for me because you know we don't know what will happen tomorrow. Well you definitely don't look miserable at all to no, me. No I don't. I don't. <laughs> and I, I want to thank you very much for sharing this time with us and I hope that um, the beautiful answers would uh, be food for the hearts Inshallah. all around those who are watching us. Um, maybe on another show we'll have you with the children Inshallah. with a little more details yeah. on your life. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for watching us. We're expecting you next week in Focus.